welcome back to the unchristian network you are on intimate moments with and uh, you know how we do on this show we bring you nothing but the best minds and brains and people who are doing impactful and wonderful things in different fields and sectors and we get to get to know them a bit and we get to know why they do why they do that and today is no different um we have got a wonderful guest who is doing amazing things in the world of entrepreneurship before we get there if you are new today please like the video share the, 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 this video as well please subscribe to the channel so that you could help us to grow we are this close guys to ten thousand. please so please 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 jump on board don't just watch subscribe i'm wearing something so cool i love this merch um it's called king jesus <laughs> I'm putting details on the screen right now where you can get this merch. Like they're they are selling some great um, Christian streetwear, um, and you could get hoodies, sweaters, t-shirts as well. Uh, the details are there in front of you. This episode is sponsored by uh, Godana uh, Attorneys Incorporated, all the way in Pretoria, for all your legal needs and all your litigation uh, issues. And when they come to sue you and all of that, uh, please contact uh, Godana Attorneys Incorporated. They are in uh, Pretoria, like I said, and the details are flashing on the screen right now. Now to today's business um someone that i follow uh, daily on the socials uh because she keeps me laughing she keeps me sane as an entrepreneur <laughs> <laughs> a fellow uh, practitioner in the marketing branding and media space ladies and gentlemen the one the only amanda sibia is in the house put your hands together make a noise <laughs> Yeah, I need to bring horns on this show. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> you better. You know what I'm saying? Must fix my life. <laughs> fix your life. You have to table touch this. How are you doing, man? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I appreciate uh, having uh, a few uh, minutes uh, of your time. Mm. Uh, as an entrepreneur, time is money. It is. So uh, it you're, is. you're very generous. Money must come from this. <laughs> exactly. Because <laughs> I'm spending the time. So the, the first question I ask every guest who comes on this particular mm. show, now that I've greeted you, yes. the first question is, how are you? I am tired. <laughs> I love the honesty. I am exhausted. Like, I keep saying it's either I need a vacation yeah. or I need to like win 20 million. Something, yeah. Because Something needs to change. <laughs> what in the world? I think you sleep so late, you work so hard. It's, yeah. it's a lot. So I'm, tired. I'm exhausted. Yeah. I need. Yeah. I either need to vacation or to mm. retire. When was your last uh, vacation? Like your Yes, last yesterday. Leave. Yesterday. Yesterday. So, okay, oh, guys. Okay. No, it's like I need a vacation, vacation. You know when you switch off your laptop, you switch yeah. off your phone, and you're just off the grid. Yeah, That's yeah, what yeah. I need. Yeah. The past couple of days wasn't that. You had your laptop but still. But I just, I had my laptop still, but I was not right. responding to emails or whatever. Yes. But I was like, a, it was a workcation. Yeah. In essence. Yeah, great. I need like a off the grid yeah, type man. of situation. Yeah. No, and that has been a while. Yeah, I, I, I have this same sentiment. Well, 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 recently I was like forced to like just... Sh- Shut, shut down, down. when mm-hmm. i lost my mom and the grief came and all mm. of that. I, had to, I, I had to just yeah you the, can't my do body both. my body just wouldn't allow me to do anything mm. i don't know if that counts as a vacation but kind of so. rest <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> but yeah, i yeah, mean yeah. that's not rest it's grief is work forced. though yeah is it yeah. my condolences also Th- thank you thank you so mm-hmm. much i appreciate that mm. um you are um a co-founder of the company that you run right now is that the story um no so oh, i co-founded you are the first i am the lady in charge. The lady in charge. <laughs> That's what my email signature says. So everyone is like, why is it lady in charge and not CEO and founder? It, it, it is lady in charge. I can't see own founder myself. I, yeah. I just can't introduce myself like that. But yeah. I'm the founder of yeah. Branding Africa, the agency Absolutely. that I run currently. Yes. I co-founded the Growth Circle, which mm. is a community for um, African entrepreneurs. Yes, yes, yes. So that's the one I co-founded. But Branding mm. Africa... It's, you're you're the one. Um, my shoe is the one crying. Oh, 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 <laughs> the, the one I was referring to was the one I think you you closed down yes. or you sold. I think that's yes. the one I'm referring to. Yeah. Um, branding Africa. Yeah. When did that begin? And uh, um, I, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about failure and mm. all of that. But the first major failure you had mm. was failing to be an employee. 
Yeah, wow, that yeah. is so fascinating. That is <laughs> Tell so me about true. that journey. <laughs> I failed as many times. Nah, how many months I, did you last? Three, three months. Oh my word. <laughs> Was that was a, a long time. Was it an agency? It was. Uh, they called themselves a tri media agency. Right, right. Um, they just did a lot of things. Yeah. Um, yeah. in the media space, sure. video, photography, apps, mm. and all of that. Mm-hmm. So it was an agency, and I was a graphic design intern. Sure. Um, for a very long three months, mm. and I was really good at a it. A very long three months. It was so long. <laughs> Look, I I think I'm a great designer. Yeah. I don't think so. I'm a great designer. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I know how to see beautiful things of course, yeah. and know how to make beautiful and put things them together and put them together and you studied it i mean come on yeah so i like the thing of just being micromanaged mm. that was the one thing i failed at wow i'm like i'm really good at this thing and someone is who's not good at it is telling me what to do that's the worst thing and i'm like give me some space listen um i, I worked for an agency mm. and i sometimes i would have my boss standing right behind yeah me pointing at the screen touching it move this do that i'm like Johnny. and then at the end of the day she's like your designs they don't look like we, you know your other work i'm like yeah it's not my work it's your work yes <laughs> oh, wow yeah no it's ridiculous right? and i think all creatives have that trouble yeah when you want to dictate how mm. they express their creativity yeah. on paper or on a computer or in a design mm. It gets frustrating, it does. and it stifles your creativity a lot. Mm. So I think I hated it as an employee, but I also mm. hated it as a creative. Yes, because as a creative, you want to be able to express yourself sure. freely yeah. in the form or the media that you that you chose. Sure. But I couldn't do that. Yeah, or rather, it was being directed in what direction it should go, Mm-mm. and I absolutely failed at being mm. failed myself at being a creative at the time. Yeah, but also failed as an employee. Absolutely, I get you. But uh, let's admit that uh, the problem is us, not them. No, no, no. It's, <laughs> I mean, they got their problems. <laughs> they do. But they do. We but are we the, are also we are, the problem. We are also the simply drama. because we are at heart and by design yeah. entrepreneurs. Yes, and entrepreneurs can't fit in all the time into no. boxes. You know? Unfortunately, they're trying to squeeze you into yeah. a little box. So, what was that dominant um, negative feeling that you would feel going to work? Was it annoyance, uh, suffocation? Mm. How would you feel going to work and just being there in that cubicle? I, I think it was, it was, it was, you know, like it gave me an opportunity to grow even in the three months mm. that I was there. That was my first ever job, mm. um, right from school. That mm. was my first actual job. Awesome. Um, but I think there was a lot of growth that came into it. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed the people I worked with. Right. Um, because they were also creators doing mm. whatever they were doing. So I enjoyed being able to witness mm. how they expressed themselves yeah, yeah, yeah. within the work that we are doing. Sure. But I felt stifled going to work. Mm. But um, only for, not for long, mm. to be honest, because three months isn't a long time. Yeah, sure. The first month you're still trying to get, you know, yeah. to know what you're trying to do, yeah. what you're meant to do. And then I think month two, that's when me and my business partner who we met yeah. at that specific job sure. started speaking about yeah. what we want to do. Yeah. So the excitement came from not going to work for work's sake, but going to work to start a business. Mm. Though I didn't know that that's what it meant. I didn't know that's what I was doing, mm. to be honest with you. But it, like I was excited to go to work to discuss, okay, and then we, what are we going to do? And then this Lovely. and then that. So the excitement came from starting a business at work, <laughs> at work. <laughs> and not work. Yeah. yeah. And many businesses have started that way. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Because you're frustrated at yeah. the end of the day. Yeah, you're stuck. Yeah. There. It's like, yeah. Get me out of here. It's, so it's, it was an escape. I think starting a business was an escape mm, at first, mm. but it was also. Like, I, like, honestly, I feel like starting a business was a calling for me because I yeah. didn't know that that's what I was doing. Mm. I just thought I was solving a problem. Mm. But I didn't know that that was, being, that was called yes. being an entrepreneur yes. or you were a business owner. Yeah. I was like, I'm just solving a problem. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. What do you think can be done better um, in corporate, particularly in the creative uh, yeah. industry with mm. agencies and all of that? I mean, creatives are not happy, man, in agencies. Yeah, yeah. There's, I mean, you, you and I interact with them almost daily, mm. and they're always complaining. The one thing I hated about agency work is that thing called timesheets. <laughs> Where my, I was always behind. Yeah. But because they've workload us so yeah. much. And yeah. Couldn't. But anyway, what, what, uh, when you think of that uh, formal work environment mm. where creatives are put there to be designers, voiceover artists, whatever it is, mm. web developers, mm-hmm. what can be done better to uh, unleash uh, mm. greater creativity yeah. to make a better work environment? Because a, a good work environment makes for happier yeah. employees or so they say. Yes. 
Honestly, I think it all lies in the communication right. of things yeah. um, and how the culture of the agencies communicate to new recruits, yeah. whether it's creatives or not. Sure. Um, and I think creatives have a very beautiful way of interpreting what you tell them. So mm. if I tell you my vision is to build the greatest agency in Africa, mm. you already have ideas on how I could make that happen yeah. in your discipline, whether yes. it be graphic design, web design, whatever it is that we hired you here for. And communicating that value, or communicating that vision or mission yeah. is very important for the creative so that they can understand how to interpret it in the work that you give them. Mm -hmm. So if ever they don't understand the vision of where you're trying to go, it makes them difficult to know what mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. And then you become frustrated because like, you're not doing what I called you here to do, but it's like, mm -hmm. I don't know what you're trying to do mm -hmm. to begin mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a miscommunication between um, how I express myself creatively versus how you want me to express my work or do my work within mm. your agency. So mm. I honestly think there's a lot of miscommunication or not understanding yeah. what yeah. you called me here for at the yeah. end of the day. That we miss each other. We do miss each other. Mm. At the end of the day, I feel like specifically when it comes to bigger agencies, creators are just numbers. Mm. They're just stuff number one, two, three, four. I and lost my name at agency. Yes. I was called the designer. Yeah. I, I was, <laughs> no one knew my name. No the one designer. cares. <laughs> no one cares when I just tell the designer to do it. So that's the thing. It's like you lose your name, you lose your identity, yeah. and at the end of the day, you feel stifled, mm -hmm. and you're not going to want to create anymore. Absolutely. And unfortunately, I don't know who predestined it, but like for any artist, for any creative, when you are creating your work or the work you do out of passion, you're yeah. not doing it for money. Right. You lose the passion out of it. Yes. Yes. Unfortunately. Unfortunately, that's and the case. And that's the one thing that sucks that we obviously have to work for a living. Yeah, we have to, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> you have to make the money. Yeah, yeah. But it unfortunately sucks the passion out of yeah. what you love doing mm. at the end of the day. And mm. then you just end up being the designer mm. as opposed exactly. to someone who is a creative who loves creating yeah. beautiful things. And and our design work is an, is an extension or even an expression yes. of our identity. Yeah, absolutely. Now, if you lose that, you are designing mm. using someone else's brain yeah. and mind and that's yeah. very uncomfortable. It is uncomfortable. Yeah. And I think that's mainly the feeling mm. at work maybe well, how many years this was like 10 11 years ago yeah yeah that i'm going there to work on someone else's vision mm. i'm mm. going there to work on on fulfilling someone else's dream and not yeah. my own yeah even though it was a journey or a starting point mm. to my own destiny mm. but i was just going there to make someone else's, mm. else money and i think my boss at the time when was not afraid to tell us that this project is bringing us X amount of money. I'm like, and I'm getting And I'm meaty. getting this, yeah, 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 yeah. I can hardly eat chips with this. Imagine. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah And yeah. I can just imagine, like I could just imagine at the time, it's like, I, like I'm literally doing this whole project. Mm. I could be getting yeah. that whole money for this thing. So yes, I think yes. that's what pushed uh, my business partner and I at the time, mm. as like, there's no way. Yeah. We like together we could do this whole project yeah. and get all of this money, yeah. as opposed to just getting a small little six thousand yeah. from it. Yeah, that's one of the things that woke me up again mm. to my entrepreneurial spirit mm. when I realized that I'm literally running entire campaigns. Yeah, I'm not just designing or mm. doing the creative. Yeah. Uh, but I'm really just strategically mm. having input into this. I'm like, mm. uh, I'm man. I need to go Something. back to my roots. Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> when it, it, entrepreneurship, did you discover it or did you decide it? This is, I'm going to do this. Because mm. all of us, you hit a point where you discover, as in, I'm, I'm made for entrepreneurship. Mm. Uh, was it this experience that made you mm. discover it? Or you just said, as in, yeah, decide that this is what I'm going to do now? It called me. Oh, yeah. I didn't know what entrepreneurship was. Yeah. I knew what being a hustler was. Yeah, yeah. I knew what um, making a plan is. Mm. And my mom is very industrial. Like, mm. she's industrious. Like, Beautiful. she will sell things from the boot. Um, so I grew up with a mother who mm. would sell pajamas to, mm -hmm. like, anything from yeah. the boot of her car at yeah. church. Yeah. To me, that wasn't... I, I didn't know that was called being a businesswoman or an entrepreneur. You're just selling things. Mm. You're hustling. You're mm. trying to make ends meet. So it wasn't modeled to me in a sit at the office, yeah. you reply Type to email, in, yes. I'm the CEO and founder. Kind of regards. Whatever. Kind of regards. It wasn't, you see, I was like, <laughs> I didn't know that yeah. like, it's never been modeled to me in that yeah. way. Love it. Neither have I ever considered like any, like I know that I can point at family members who yeah. are entrepreneurs now that I have defined it and I know what it is. Sure. But at that time, I, it wasn't modeled to me the way that, oh, this is entrepreneurship yeah, type yeah, of thing. Yeah. So 
my grandmother runs an orphanage. I feel like that is it's a, at some level yeah. entrepreneurship oh, or definitely. social entrepreneurship. Social entrepreneurship yeah. Um, she has she's a quote unquote taxi boss. That's entrepreneurship. Come on. But that for me is just someone who is like fending for their families. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't modeled to me the way entrepreneurship is, mm, is modeled mm, now mm, in mm, this day and age. Mm. So I think it was very important for me to not even know what it is so that I can go into it freely. fully. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and yeah. fully mm, as well. Mm. So at that time we were just solving a problem. Like I was saying, we weren't necessarily thinking or rather I wasn't thinking I want to get into entrepreneurship. I'm choosing this sure, road. Sure. Did I choose to leave the work and start the business? Absolutely. But that was to solve the problem that yeah. we had identified yeah, at yeah, the yeah. time. But I honestly did not know it was called being entre- an entrepreneur. They say entrepreneurship is like insanity. Yeah. Daily, yeah. What? We, we choose Absolutely. insanity. Violence. Yeah. <laughs> we choose madness yeah. every day yeah. uh, because at some point you need to be delusional. Yeah. Uh, at every so point. So <laughs> Delulu is the Sululu for at us, listen, unfortunately. Every day. <laughs> And I'm fine with that. You know, I'm fine with that. Yeah, yeah. It had to be. And I think I was like, we weren't necessarily delusional in in starting the business, but there was a level of like, what are you doing? Yeah. And obviously people will ask you because at that point, the the next thing to do was like find another job or Mm. get a better paying job. Mm, mm. But that's, I was like, no. I'm great at this. I'm going to make 60,000 rand a month. Yeah. Did I? No. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the journey continues. The journey continues. The journey continues. Yes. So delusion is absolutely <laughs> when, a solution. When I think of a nine to five, something happens to my body. I just, not, I just like, hey, hey, hey. Yeah. <laughs> Breaking two hives. Yeah. yeah. Um, you, you spoke about the little background in the family where you saw entrepreneurship modeled yeah. to you. Yeah. Um, many people know you as the entrepreneur, the marketer, yeah. the branding girl, mm. and all of that. And we'll, we'll get to expanding a bit on your mind on branding mm-hmm. a bit. But you are also a PK. That's the other thing we have in common. <laughs> <laughs> Daughter of Bishop. Oh my Bishop Simina. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Know. <laughs> yeah. Um, your sister, I met yeah. your sister some months ago. Mm. Um, she's she's a, she's a pastor. Yeah. She's a prophet. Absolutely. Don't you have another sister or a sibling who's also into ministry? Um, so we're five at home. I'm number yes. three. Yes, yes. Um, middle child. Yeah, the middle child. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my sister is yeah. a Victoria. Prophet Victoria. Yes. Um, two, both of my brothers are both pastors. Right. The other sister is. 14 so yeah. i guess she's the past in the making yes she is the making. <laughs> <laughs> but um they are they are all in ministry yeah every one of them i, yeah. I mean i would say also my little sister is because it's beautiful i mean she grew up in the church opened yeah. her eyes and she was Hallelujah. yeah yeah yeah, yeah <laughs> you yeah. know so um in some way shape or form she yeah. is in ministry i mean she's very active in the youth sure. but um i think it's mm. just growing up in the church mm. that kind of forces you to be that yeah but in terms of my other siblings who are obviously much older are all of them are pastors. Sure. Um, how did the household, the official Spia, look like uh, at age eight, nine? Um, you're growing up as a PK, chaotic. five siblings, church is part of your everyday. It, it was it was chaotic. Yeah. Um, it was chaotic. When I think about <laughs> Sundays, um, yeah. the the earliest memories that I have of Sundays is obviously very chaotic. Everyone has. They pre- not position, but like they have their role yeah. within the church. Were you all cooking before church? Yes. All right. So we wake up at like six o'clock in the morning. Yeah. It's my mom and my sister, we're cooking. Right. While the brothers are headed to church to mm. prepare sound yes, yes, yes. and all of that. And by like seven o'clock, everyone has to get showered <laughs> so that when church starts at 8.30, like, everyone is like positioned properly. I think somehow we had the same dad, the same parents really. Because we, well, I, going, listen. Exactly. This is my household <laughs> yeah. right there. That is literally everyone is, does what they do. Mm. I'm on stage. My sister was on stage at some point mm. until she wasn't. One of my brothers is a, is the actual drama. Yeah, yeah. It it was a lot. You know, yes. everything is with, and you know, you're the first to mm. arrive, the last to leave. Yes, yes, yes. But you, I don't know, you you grow up to really appreciate the people you grow up with because Absolutely. I think you get s- such great skills mm. under like underrated skills mm, when you mm, grew up in the mm, church mm. and i think one of them is definitely public speaking yes. you will listen yes. you will you will not be nervous mm. to speak in public if you grew up in yes, the church absolutely and i think my vocational skills come from the church setting speaking to people being like you're having a high eq mm-hmm. comes from mm. being able to interact with different characters mm, mm. new old 
young, old as well. Absolutely. You interact with so many different people that it really does help you in mm. even in the business world yes. as opposed to it just yes. being in the church. Mm. So there are certain skills that come from a church that are so important mm. um, at a later stage in mm. life. And I think mm. you realize it later, mm. um, but the household work was chaotic yeah. on a Sunday morning. Um, for me, media found me in church. I mean, you this, know, yeah. My earliest memories was uh, duplicating cassette tapes wow. of sermons from my that dad. Was His a long sermons. Time ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this was, I think it was 1997 when I really started 96 97 98 sure. my dad had conferences all over the place called believers conventions mm. and so um every time there was preaching of course mm. were cassette tapes mm. and i was there i was the guy at very young age and i loved it that is so fascinating loved it. and you put a sticker on it and then we write the title <laughs> of the message and Not a the cassette. speaker cassette <laughs> later on i then developed it out, out of just curiosity mm. into cds and mm. the, the 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 first ministry that I would say, um, like, groomed me in ministry and all of mm. that was when I got to Bloemfontein to study tertiary. Mm -hmm. um, and then I joined this church. I introduced CDs now. Got it. it was the first for me mm. as well. They thought, ah, this guy's coming with me. But I, I was like, I'm just starting this as mm. well. And um, it developed into, like, now I'm running an agency from, from that. From that. See, so I, I relate to what you're saying. It's a uh, yeah. good seed. Yeah, very, very. Good seed. Um, many PKs... Uh, um, testify of traumas mm. from being a PK. Mm. Um, is that your testimony as well? To, to a yeah. certain extent? To a certain, so I didn't, um, to give context, I didn't grow up from a very young age, from infant age as a PK. Sure. Um, so my mom married Bishop Sibiat in 2010. Mm. Um, so it's a blended family. Get you. So my brothers come from my father's side and me and my sister Victoria are from my mother's side mm. and a young child from from the marriage get you, get you. um so five of us are a blended family mm. so my experience of being a pk came in later in my life See. though i did grow up in the church nonetheless mm, mm. so um obviously if you have a praying grandmother you know uh, no listen you're I'm not, not like you, you <laughs> want to sleep on a sunday Aye. excuse me <laughs> and grooves and no no um so i grew up in that context yeah. in terms of um family right um and my mother as well church on a sunday was obviously something awesome. that we did nonetheless mm. um so getting into being a pk was interesting because i knew it from an audience yes. point of view yes um i knew a lot of pks mm. from the fact that i go to church so i know oh that's the pastor's kid that's yes. the bishop's kid yes. whatever, whatever. Yes, yes. so i knew it from the outside eye looking mm. in mm. so it became very fascinating to not be on the inside mm. um as like what's well, this what goes on yeah. now, it's, now it's you now <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh guys wake <laughs> up at six yes. to go to church is crazy so it became a very change Right. Um, like a changed environment for me, right? Uh, though it was not foreign to get into, yes, because I grew up in the church yes. nonetheless, yes, 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 yes. Um, so in terms of traumas, I think your life really does change when church becomes or leads your life, mm. church becomes the number one thing that you mm. do in your life, yeah, yeah, yeah. So when it comes to traumas, I would say that there are certain things that you learn about yourself mm. that when you get and um, when you when you grow up you kind of recognize that I don't think I want to be this part of sure. the church anymore. Sure. I don't want to be this person anymore. Sure. And I think personally for me, it's been quite a journey mm. because you go into it, I think at a young age, um, it becomes something that you do because your mom says, yes. I'm young, I can't have a choice. Yes, yeah. But the minute you have a choice, it becomes very important for you to make the right choice for yourself yeah yeah um not that you're gonna go there and, and not love jesus anymore, yeah, yeah 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 but actually deciding whether you want you jesus was an inheritance or a choice mm, mm, so mm. i think my decision came when i went to study in durban right for jesus to become a choice yes for me yes your and own. not my own choice not mm. because you know yeah, i'm yeah, not yeah. i'm not it's not an inheritance that you yeah. get because your parents believe and exactly, now you exactly, believe exactly so it became very important for me to choose Jesus for myself and to choose to serve for myself as well. Mm, mm. Even the choice to um, leave or change churches, it mm. becomes a decision for me mm, mm. as well. So I wouldn't say they are um, traumas per se, but there's been challenges that forced you to choose whether you want mm. to do it for yourself or for mm. them. Yes, yes. So it, those choices are made deliberately. Mm. And I think as you get older, you choose them more wisely as yes. well, but it's important to have discernment. I get you. 
I'm, 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 I'm quite fascinated about your, you know, also your journey with God. Mm -hmm. um, and what many of us fail to do in the marketplace is find how we can express yeah. our, our relationship with God Absolutely. at work. We hear about marketplace this and mm. we have to be ambassadors for the kingdom. <laughs> but and how? <laughs> but how, how does it look like for you? You, you, you encourage it a lot. Mm. You, know, you share a lot of personal content, mm. uh, vlogging. Uh, sometimes one of the first videos I, I saw of you yeah. was you praying in your apartment as you yeah. started your day. Yeah. Um, you know, others do get ready with me when I <laughs> faggy pray. Pray with me. Yes, pray with me. <laughs> how, how does that look like? What, what's, what's our responsibility as kingdom people mm. in the workplaces where we are and, and all of that? Yeah, what do you think? Yeah, I think it's important for us to be ambassadors of Christ wherever we are. Sure. Um, in the marketplace or not. And I think we a lot of people who are in the marketplace shy away from proclaiming that they are not Christian, but believers of yeah. um, Jesus Christ yeah, yeah. In, in their marketplace or in their, yeah. you know, in their world. And I think social media is a very tricky place at the moment because mm. you are afraid for, you know, people's comments yeah. say, hey, how could you believe in Jesus? Or, <laughs> like, I thought you were a business person yeah. or just type Come of situation. Yeah. Um, I think we are afraid to express ourselves. And I mean, Obviously, Jesus like, if you are ashamed of me here, mm. Mm. <laughs> you know, and I think it's very important for us to not be afraid to speak about where we find our comfort, where we find yes. our help. Yes. Um, and if we are afraid to speak about that, then what are we doing in the marketplace mm, to begin mm, with? Mm. And I, I know I've been called to the marketplace, yes. to bring God back into the marketplace. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. But it becomes very tricky to know how to do it specifically and i think i'm still figuring sure, it out sure. because you can't necessarily i, I don't want to be the typical we are doing a kingdom business conference. <laughs> yes i'm like what okay, does that mean but like <laughs> what are we doing prophetic entrepreneur like <laughs> you know i just i don't yeah. and like i don't get it like yeah. it loses me like i'm yeah. lost in the yeah. mix of the things. jargon <laughs> yeah the jargon of like oh, yeah come on like kingdom yeah. business okay great but what does that mean yeah. what are we doing what are yeah. you talking about and i think it's very important for believers to be in the marketplace mm. because there there's an idea that um when you are a jesus believer you will definitely have suffering mm, mm. i don't believe in that yeah I don't that subscribe. when you are a believer of christ there is a point in your life where you will suffer every day you're, you're praying lord please get me out of this mm. you're every day when are you mm. getting out of mm. this mm. you know mm. and i believe that there is a representation needed mm. of business people who are doing very well yeah who are unapologetically yeah. Christian. Billionaires. Uh, Billionaires. Captains of listen, industry. Listen, captains of industries mm -hmm. who are unapologetically Christian as well yes. and not afraid to proclaim it. Right. And I'm telling you, I'm, I'm going there. I'm not on the billionaire part of things I know. We are, yet, we are, we are, we are. But I am moving. <laughs> and I want yeah. it to be known that when I did make it, even in the times I didn't make it, mm. it was all God. All God. It was all God. And yeah. I think even if I may not necessarily in the forefront conduct my business mm. uh, as like I'm a Christian entrepreneur. It's like, mm. no, I will only, there are certain values within my business that are absolutely Christian values. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. There are people who I will not do business with right. because of my values as a Christian sure, woman sure, and sure. as a Christian entrepreneur. Yeah. But it will, it, I don't want you to not do business with me or to do business with me just because I'm a Christian entrepreneur. Or not. Yeah, yeah. I can do the work. Yeah. Whether you like it or not, my work yeah. is good. And yeah. my work is not good only because I'm a Christian entrepreneur. Yeah. My work is good because my work is good. Mm -hmm. And I want when people t to see like the success within my business, to for me not to say, oh, I made it, hey. I made it mm. by myself mm. Mm. with no co-founder, with yeah, no yes. funding. No, I made it because of Jesus. Of, of Jesus. Full stop, that's Amen. it. Amen, amen. Yeah. Um, what a tough decision uh, confronted you once mm. that clashed with your 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 christian values yeah. and <laughs> the temptation was good yeah and the uh, and the serpent was like here's an apple here's the fruit you want it <laughs> looks shiny did god really <laughs> say that you 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 know <laughs> yeah you Do you know, remember like one instance you could share mm, with us? there's there's a lot and i think there was one in particular there was a project that we were working on and yeah. this is a couple of years ago sure. and the money looked great yeah and did I need the money at then? <laughs> of I course. Absolutely. We always do. <laughs> always needed the money. Yeah. Um, and the person who was offering this project mm. um, knew that we were very capable of doing the project mm. as an agency. Mm. Um, we had the capacity, we had the resources to make sure that this project can mm. 
be done. Mm. But it's like, oh, well, but in order to kind of get this project, because it's a sizable amount, there are certain things that you have to do. Man. Um, and I think it's it's tricky being a female Man. entrepreneur yes. and also being a young female, yes. Yes. you know, gorgeous looking. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> it's, it's tricky. <laughs> and there's certain things that you might not get because you say no to Ish. certain advances. Ish. Um, and I think discipline comes in knowing what to say yes to, knowing mm, what to say no to. Yeah. And there are good things that you could say no to. Yeah. And you'd feel like, oh, but come on, Amanda, all he wants sure. was a dinner date. <laughs> I'm like, no, and dinner date, no, then it what? was not going to end there. It was not going to end not. there. It was going to be so many yeah, more. Yeah. So it, you have to say no to certain things, even though, I mean, the, there was a temptation of it because of the reward. Of course, yeah. Though the the whatever he wanted me to do for the reward mm, for me was mm, like a mm, instant no. It's like, exactly. oh, keep your money. No, but no. again, it wasn't a, I think the the difficulty was the fact that it wasn't only my decision to mm, make. Mm, mm. Uh, a lot of people were being impacted mm. by the benefit of what this project would do yeah. for our reputation as an agency, but also the money in it. Yeah. So the no for me was not just the no for me. Yeah. It was a no. I'm, I'm like literally taking like, you know, food out of your mouth. Sure. Like, I'm sorry, guys. Yeah. We're going to have to say no to this project yeah. because yeah. we're going to have to you say no. You cannot sacrifice yourself like that. You cannot. Absolutely. Um, and I'm, there are many instances. I remember mm. there was uh, another project, another client that I had who had very separate beliefs, uh, mm. belief system to mine. Mm. Um, and they wanted me to work on their brand and they were more of like a traditional, you know, whatnot. But right. I'm like, it's a good project and I can help you do this. But mm. unfortunately, because we don't have the same belief system, mm. I cannot help you. Right, right. So I will recommend you to someone else, mm. but it's just not going to be me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I think there's a lot. God's blessed me with, with like, this conviction of being able to say yes or no to right. certain things that right. I want or do not want. Yeah. Um, but also being able to discern when to say yes mm. or no mm. is very important mm. within the business context. Right. Um, but also for your personal journey with God as yeah. well. So. Yeah. Being able to discern when to say yes or no, but not only the discernment, but also the action of saying yes or no is yes, very important. Yes, so yes. there's been a lot of carrots dangled mm, in mm. front of me, but I just thank God that I've had the conviction to say no. So say I give you a call, right? One day mm-hmm. and said, Amanda, I need your advice. Mm-hmm. I'm holding this event mm. and I've just been uh, approached by an alcohol brand. Yeah. They want to sponsor. <laughs> They're giving me my a gosh, good check. My gosh. Amanda, advise me. My sister in Christ. What would you say to Ndumi so the entrepreneur at that moment? Yeah, Amanda, if, if, they are, if they are saying, no, we'll bring Savannah zero zero, it doesn't have a... <laughs> No, this one in, in a percentage. Hey, 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 hey. King. Gooby, gooby, gooby. Yeah. I mean, for the sake of a belief, I would say no. Yeah, man. Um, because unfortunately, we, you're not you're not doing things just for yourself, yeah. but also for whoever's looking at you. Yeah. And if ever someone knows that, no, this guy is very much mm. a Christian pastor. Yeah. Like if he's not being endorsed by an alcoholic brand, what is he doing? So there is a necessity for that kind of conviction to say no to things, knowing that God will bring bigger things yeah. at the end of the day. Yeah. And it's like fine to say no. Absolutely. Although, you know, would be nice. You would be nice. And yeah. I mean, I guess like alcoholic endorsements are, are great because yeah. they come with a lot of money at the end of the day. But money. unfortunately, they also come with a certain level of reputation. Yeah, that association. Yeah, that association it's is too very, expensive. It's yeah. too expensive. Yeah. You're so right. So that yeah. association is definitely expensive yeah. for you to just sell yourself for you. money you. at the end of the day. Yeah. When I hear the name of your business, Branding Africa, yeah. it's, it's more than just a company name. Yeah. A label. I mm. hear a declaration. Yes. I hear territories. I yeah. hear. I hear global. I hear mm. international. Mm, right. Absolutely. Um. Um. What, what's your vision there? Um. But also, I want that to lead into the other question that uh, people don't understand what branding is. Yeah. They mix it up with all kinds of things. <laughs> Always. So when you say branding Africa, mm. what I, I know vision evolves. Yes. What's in your heart um, about that? Because uh, mm. I, I also feel it, it's like an assignment of sorts. Uh, it is. Yeah. Um, and our our domain, like our website, is we are branding Africa. Oh wow! It's that's who we are, and that's what we do. It's more powerful. <laughs> <laughs> so like when you get onto it, it's like oh, we, yeah. that's literally the first thing that you Amazing. see. Amazing. Yeah. Um, we are branding Africa as a company, but as a vision, we are branding Africa mm, as mm, well. Mm. And I think there's it's it's so important for me to tell Africa's story from mm. an African point of view. Amazing. Um, and I think I'm, I don't know. God's called me for this continent. Mm. Everything that I do it mm. has got an Africa in it. Good. 
Um, and that's really something that I absolutely love doing. Sure. I, I love this continent, but my vision specifically when it comes to branding Africa is to kind of have an Africa where we are building our own futures yeah. and we are not depending on anyone else's mm. resources or anyone else's help yeah. to make things happen for yeah. ourselves. Yeah. And I believe that unemployment really is, I mean, rife in our country specifically, but in Africa as a whole, but as I think yeah. we are such a resilient people that we will solve our own problems. Mm, mm. And I mean, in Africa as a whole, the working age population here who are starting businesses is at an all time high at 22%. Mm, and mm. that's the highest in the globe. Mm. It shows you that Africans have an appetite for entrepreneurship. Yes, yes. They might not know how to articulate mm. it in that way, but we have such a huge appetite right. for entrepreneurship, but we don't have the capabilities all the mm. time. I was about to, to ask, what's, what's, the, what's the missing ingredient? Why aren't we seeing this, yeah. this growth? Uh, and I mean, I think it, it is seen, it's definitely there, but we underestimate small growth. Mm. We underestimate umam, whoever who's mm. selling, you know, tomatoes at yeah. the side of the yeah. road. Yeah. And we don't consider them business people, mm. but mm. they are. Oh, yeah. We don't consider them entrepreneurs. Mm. So I think we overlook the scale of entrepreneurship mm. Mm. within our continent within our country yeah. as well and i think it's important to rebrand the thought of it or Ooh, to rebrand right, right. our perception of africa yeah, yeah, yeah. and there's this quote that i love by george kimball it says the darkest thing about africa is our ignorance of it mm, mm, and for mm. me that is literally what i want to do mm. is we need to tell africa's story from an african point of view sure. but also rebrand the story for mm, that mm. so that we don't overlook um, the smaller businesses. Sure. And that's why I always say slow growth is still growth. We mm. underestimate the smallest little move from point A to point um, A, point B. Mm. You know, mm. we mm. really underestimate those smaller sure. things. Yeah. And I think entrepreneurship on the continental scale is that there's so many entrepreneurs and like others are undocumented because mm. they are maybe in the rural area. Mm. They Maybe there's Uba Sibi or someone mm, who mm. has a taxi that takes you from the rural mm. areas to town. He's an entrepreneur. Yeah, but work. just because he's not necessarily thought of um, the future of his business in two, three, five years' time, um, there's a certain level of that business ending with him. Mm, mm, so mm. I think entrepreneurs need to be reminded to build businesses outside of the first generation yes, that will yes. grow even outside the yeah, first generation. Yeah. So I think for Branding Africa, our vision is to build great brands, wow. to build great businesses, but also to recognize that Africa has a very huge appetite for entrepreneurship, but uh, a huge lack in terms of you know, like capacitating sure, those people sure. to build great businesses yeah, as well. Yeah. Is, is that what makes uh, your particular agency different? <clears throat> is that your uniqueness, the African touch, the African yes, vision? Yes. I love it. Yes. So we don't work with global clients at yeah. all. So if um, we've had... Oh, is that a policy? Yeah, that's policy. Wow, I didn't know this. <laughs> You're turning down dollars and pounds? Absolutely. Oh, my word. Absolutely. So we do Throw have... them this way, ne? <laughs> yeah, don't worry. I'll, I'll bring them your way. Yeah, um, So we, we, we decline um, clients from, I mean, all the time. Hmm. So we do have we do have clients who are outside of Africa, hmm. but who are African. Yeah. So we work... Currently, there's this um, client who is in Australia. She is originally from Zimbabwe. Right. But her business is based in Australia, Everything that she's doing is in mm, Australia. Mm. We work with her because she is an African founder. Yes, yes. So everyone who is from Africa of African descent, those will be our clients. Mm. Um, America has their own strategists. Mm. America has their own branding agencies. They don't need yeah. to take anything yeah. else from us anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a policy that we don't work with global mm, clients. Mm, mm. Um, but there are ways in which we can like partner with global clients but to benefit africa yeah. but everything that we're doing with which is in the name so mm. if you're saying um i think our name really cleverly answers what we do and where yeah. we do it yeah, yeah, yeah. we we do branding in africa um and for africans mm -hmm. as well so mm -hmm. it's it's a policy but also just a declaration that yeah. We are doing this for people who are mm. African, who are of African descent sure. in Africa. That's as well. amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, you spoke about the growth circle. Yeah. Um, one time, I, I I said to you that is that is a ministry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> tell us a bit about the growth circle. Yeah. Uh, you, you you did touch on it a bit. Mm. Um, I'm 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 particularly interested to hear. Um, 
what what did you hear from God about that? Because that that has got a touch of God right mm, there. Mm. <laughs> you know, you you like pastoring us as entrepreneurs. We need Hallelujah. on those de- <laughs> on those depressed days. <laughs> Honestly, you know what? I think God's made me such a light person. Yeah. Um, on purpose. Hmm. Even though some people might look at me and say, "Oh, that one's so intimidating." <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> um, but I think very much God's given me a heart for people. Yeah. Um, in the work that I do, in just like being me mm. at the end of the day. And the growth circle becomes an extension of that mm. as well. And when we started the growth circle with my business partner, it was meant to be just a podcast. It's like, right. oh, come on, we have to have conversations right. about entrepreneurship yeah. with yeah. entrepreneurs in Africa. Yeah. But I was like, no, man, it's not lending. Mm. Mm. And she wanted to do it. And it's like, oh, no, I just need someone to do it with. with and like, me. oh, no, cool. So as we started discussing it, I was like, but this podcast is not landing mm, with me. Mm, it's really mm, not mm, landing. Mm. Um, and I was like, there's really more to a community than just conversation. Of course. Of course. Conversation is, a, is an important part of community, mm, but it's mm. not the only thing. Mm. And I think there are so many conversations that happen um, around the entrepreneurial space, but there's, there's still this rigidness about it. Sure. There's no be free let's be friends mm. you know let's mm, mm. come on help me out yeah man. like don't worry i've got someone yeah. a client let me throw them to you let me we, we act very bossy around yes. each other very like, ceo around like... each other and then we are all going through the same stuff we are we yeah. are and we're afraid to say it we're mm. just trying to be ceo and founder all oh, the time you, yeah and like can you be a person at the end of the day exactly. you know exactly. so i think the growth circle is really meant to demystify entrepreneurship mm. it's meant to be a community of right. friends who yes. are entrepreneurs yes. who are not afraid to share ideas, yes. share solutions, yes. um, and share resources mm. at the end of the day mm. and mm. be able to have conversations. Because sure. I think as when everyone introduces them as CEO and founder, you automatically think that they all have it figured out. Yeah, yeah. They all know what a balance sheet looks like. <laughs> no. They all know. And I'm like, that's not true. We don't know. When I started and someone said, you need to have financial statements, I'm like, what are those? Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Um, there's so many things that I didn't know when I started. Sure. And we take for granted that, I, that there are people starting today yes. who don't know what that is, who don't know the bare minimum of starting off Ish, the documents man, that you hard, need, yeah. compliance-wise, what you need to get a tender if you want to be a tender mm. premium. Like, it really... There's a lot we don't know. Mm. And there's a lot we don't know that is not taught in an institution yes. anyway. Even in business schools. Yes, it's not. Yeah. You know, and it's very necessary for us to be the teachers, mm. for us to be those lecturers, to yeah. be like, listen, when I was doing this and this is how I did it, it worked for me. You can try it out. If it mm. doesn't, mm. you know, yeah. try something else. Yeah. The, so the growth circle is meant to be a community of people like that. Yes. You know, just a community of just multiplied me and you. Yeah. And um, across Africa who yeah. are able to come to a community and not feel ashamed to ask yeah. the simplest question. Yeah. It's like, how much is tax again? Yeah. Is it 15%, 14%? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't want you to be ashamed of yeah, asking that kind of thing. Yeah. Unashamedly ask, mm. guys, how how do mm. I send this email? <laughs> do I say kind regards or warm regards? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which yeah. one works in this yeah. context? Yeah. And th- there's no stupid question. Uh, yeah. There shouldn't be a stupid question. So that's what the growth circle is meant to be. And um, that's how it's meant to evolve. Um, but honestly, I think I, yeah, I bit off too much that I could change at this point. <laughs> I mean, it's, <laughs> it's a lot. I think... As, yeah. as business owners, we always have great ideas. Yes, yes. And sometimes you don't have the brain capacity, yeah. energy capacity, resource capacity yeah. to make it happen. But yeah. it doesn't diminish the idea. But that ministry or that um, business is something that I'm quite passionate about because yeah. I'm passionate for, that. passionate about entrepreneurs mm. in Africa just being, yeah. you know. And, and their wellness, our, our yeah. well-being as, as entrepreneurs as well. It's so important. Um, business school does not teach you. No how to what to do with a situation where you are invoice rich yes but, yes but bank balance but cash broke. Flow. <laughs> yes yes absolutely it doesn't and unfortunately yeah. you just need to sometimes you might not want a solution to your problem yeah but being able to vent just, i need to talk to somebody it's like, yeah. listen i just need to talk to some and just tell you i only have a thousand rand in my account right now but my invoices are over a hundred thousand yes, yes, help yes. me yeah. help me just yes. breathe yeah, in the next man, two minutes it's crazy. It's so crazy. i think it's necessary for us to have a community like that yeah um, because we are so standoffish as entrepreneurs mm, mm. Um, and we think we've all made it. And I'm like, come on, like, unnecessarily. I need you to get off your high horse for two <laughs> seconds and just have a conversation yes. with me. Yeah. And like, that's why I think when we hosted our um, our day off mm. last year, we did, had a, a, a day off play date mm. 
for entrepreneurs. It was so intentional to do it as a play date and not a networking session. Yes, yes. Because networking sessions, you know, oh, what do you do? Yeah. Oh, hey, you, what? You're in work mode. I'm like, yo, guys, let's switch off the what do you do. Yes. Let's just go play bowling, yeah, yeah. have pizza and yeah. chill. Mm. Um, and you can talk about what you do because we're entrepreneurs. You're going to mm. talk about what you do at yeah. the end of the day. Yeah. But let's just do it in a very casual kind of setting. Sure. So I think that also spoke to the vision behind Growth Circle yeah. Yeah, to yeah. just be a circle of people who we can grow together. Yeah. Hence the um, name. You and I being church kids, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> Jesus kids. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> um, wh- what kind of conversation can we have around uh, marketing, branding, uh, and and the likes mm. in in the ministry world, yeah. the church world. Mm. Um, where do you notice the church world getting it wrong? Mm. What can we implement and what can we change? Sometimes I look at some church posters <laughs> and I'm like, Guys, you mean this one? You mean this one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes the design is yeah. seven colors and yeah. it's a rainbow. I'm like, oh lord. Mm. Uh, where, where where should ministers or ministries start thinking, or how should they start thinking? about their brands and just marketing the ministry. It's evangelism, yes, in Mm. spiritual terms, but Mm. it is marketing. Mm. Yeah. I think for the church, we need to lead when it comes to branding and marketing, not follow. Mm. Um, I think when it comes to, I mean, obviously different churches do things differently. There are others who are like super modern and, you know, they approach to design marketing and others that are very traditional in the sense of, 17 colors in one yeah. poster type of situation. Yeah. And I think they are, they are, they are both on opposite ends. Mm. And I think for the church who is more on the modern side, we need to stop wanting to look like the world in order to get them. Ooh. Um, which Ooh. I think is happening a lot. Yes, at a very higher rate. Too much. Yes. Um, on the other side, we need to not be afraid yeah. to embrace change yes. um, in order to not look like the world, mm. but to evolve mm. with the world. Mm. I think we struggle day. to find the line though, yes. right? Like, where's the line? There's a line that yeah. we're struggling to get to. The mm. other's like, no, we can't. Mm. We're not moving. We're yes. still going to use a cassette. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And it's like, no, come on, no, let's just use everything. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I'll use chat GPT to yes. put together my sa- yes, sermon. Yes, yes, yes. It's like, can we, we need to find yeah. a, a balance between the right, two because right. others are embracing it a bit too, not embracing it too much, but like mm. we're trying to look too much like the world in order to attract the world. Yes, yes, yes. And I know that there is a certain call to bring to Jesus people who do not know him, mm. but that doesn't mean you should look like the world in mm, order to mm, do that. Exactly. On the other end, I think we are too stuck in wanting to be so different mm. or wanting to still do things very traditionally. Yeah. Um, and I think we forget that the word of God never changes. Yes. yes. Um, we may change as people. Mm. The church setting may change. Sure. Um, not even change, but evolve. Because yeah. we, we're not in 1997 no, of course, anymore. Of course, yeah. And there's certain, certain things that we have to embrace um, as the church in ministry, whether it be media, marketing, and branding. Mm, mm. There are certain things that we have to embrace in order to represent God well. Yes, with excellence. With excellence. Yes, yes. Um, and I think that's just what we need to do. It's sure. like we need to look at what we're doing. Like, does this represent God well? Mm, mm. But also does it communicate to the yes, church well at yes, the same time? Yes. So I think there's it's it it may be a bit of a challenge depending on the yeah. the leadership of that church and sure. the kind of church it is. They are more traditional churches, mm. more Pentecostal ones. Yeah. But I think we need to not be afraid to lead in branding and marketing. Yeah. Like yeah. where things are going in the world should be led by godly things. Mm. Like the church should be mm. the leader of the yes. community. Yes. Yes. If ever we're embracing AI, the church should be saying yes. we're embracing AI. Yeah. Yeah. If we're like whatever happens in this world should be led by the church. Yes. But unfortunately, yes. here and there it happens yeah. the other way around. It's important so that we give it a God flavor, yes. a God expression. Absolutely. Leading to a God purpose. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it doesn't happen that way yeah. all the time. Yeah. How can we advise um uh, uh, church leaders, mm. pastors and so on? Um, people who are running ministry organizations mm. on the differences between marketing, yeah. branding, mm. and PR. Yeah. <laughs> PR what can we say there so that there's mm. clear understanding? Mm. These things are not one. Yeah. Uh, you know, w- what are they? So that someone is listening out there and say, listen, I need to rethink how I approach this in my yeah. church because our, uh, you know, a lot of our audience is, um, you know, uh, Christians. Yeah. Yeah. And church people. So, mm. um, Help us there to understand marketing, yeah. brand, mm. and PR. Yeah. He listened. <laughs> hey, I think the first thing we need to understand is that marketing, branding, and PR, 
the definition of them stay the same whether you use them in the church or in the world. Good. If Good. you use it in corporate, the Good. same marketing we're going to use in corporate mm. is the same marketing we're going to use in your church. Yeah, yeah. There, there is no different marketing for the church. Yeah. There is no, no, but we have to do branding for the church. You know, the a church branding. Yes. No, <laughs> it's the same thing, the yeah. same way or the principles of branding, marketing yeah. and PR sure. stay the same whether mm. they're being used for an alcoholic brand yeah. or they're being used for a, for a church. The expression of them mm. might change That's it. Yeah. because of the kind of organization you're doing it sure. for, sure. but they're not the same. <clears throat> and I'll repeat what I said. I said this, I say this a lot mm. in terms of explaining the difference between branding and marketing branding or that marketing mm -hmm. is like asking someone out mm -hmm. while branding is the reason they say yes mm. so or no mm. so in the context mm. of a church would be like we're marketing our church because we're having evangelism mm. right. but branding how you look what the colors are is the reason they're going to come or not come. so if you are seven colors mm. this church poster would say <laughs> You know, like depending on what your yeah, person looks like, yeah, yeah. depending on your branding, mm. that's the reason why someone is going to say yes or no. Yes. But the importance of whether they say yes or no is in understanding who you're trying to mm. court mm. at the end of the day. Mm. Who mm. you are, who do you want mm. to be the person who mm. comes to you? Mm. PR then becomes the what has other people said about this church? Man, man, that becomes the but like. I saw, you know, it's like, what, what is the reputation around yes. the church? Yes, yes, yes. That's what PR is. Yes. It's like what people are saying, what you are saying about sure. yourself. Where are you saying it mm. as well? Mm. They all work hand in hand together. You can't have branding without marketing. You yeah. can't have marketing without PR. Yeah, yeah. But understanding the difference between all of them makes you also understand which one is the most, like, what's the biggest priority for you at the moment. Right. Don't do all of them at the same time. Mm. Mm. And I think branding becomes very fundamental in doing a lot of these things because mm. if you want to do your marketing um, without proper branding, you are just screaming at everyone and hoping yes. someone will yes, get yes, it. Yes, 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 yes. So it's important to do things very strategically, know who you're speaking to mm -hmm. at the end of the day because mm. as much as, you know, the church setting is different because you want to speak to everyone. Everybody, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, yeah, you don't. All, all the lost sheep. You all want, the lost sheep. You want to like speak to them. All of them. Yeah. Are yeah. you sure? Yeah. Not you know? everyone is your client. Exactly. And possible. I think, same thing when it comes to church. Not yeah. everyone is your client. Yes. And that's why there are so many, at this point, so many denominations of yeah, churches yeah, because yeah. I might not be a Roman Catholic uh, audience mm. while someone else might be a Pentecostal audience. Sure. And depending on what the poster looks like and what you're communicating, <laughs> you might call two different people at sure, different times. Sure. So it's important to communicate properly what you're trying to do yeah, yeah. so that you can get the right type of audience. Mm, mm. And, and I think maybe where the church gets it gets stuck especially when it comes to communication, is trying to speak to everyone. Yeah, yeah. Because everyone needs Jesus. Yes. You're like, we want to speak to everyone. Yeah. Um, but I think where some would get it right is obviously doing different things for different audiences. You have a youth what what. Yes. You're speaking to the youth. Yes. Speak yes. a youth language. Yes. Don't say, you know, don't have a very... <laughs> old yeah 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 and bombastic words yes because you're not speaking to them biblical jargon yes. and yeah, yeah that might you know cut it for the thursday yeah. tenders or yeah, women yeah. <laughs> but it's not going to cut it for, for the, the youth. youth yeah so i think depending on who you're speaking to at different levels mm. be intentional with speaking to them in that sure, way use sure. use casual language mm. use mm. you know change your language mm. depending on who you're on speaking the to on yeah. the audience yeah and i think that'll help in terms of where the yeah. church can be in terms of marketing. one thing that we overlook when it comes to brand is the experience yeah. that someone uh, has when they are with us yeah when they come to contact with yeah. any touch point mm. of the ministries so we sometimes get it right on logos websites yeah. and flyers yeah but the experience yeah. which um which gives birth to um the feelings and yeah. emotions that someone feels when mm. they're with us mm. Mm. Uh, we also miss it there because that is a we big do. part of brand. We do. Yeah, I think branding is, I think we think branding is only online, mm. um, but it happens offline. I think oh, yeah. a brand experience is, is expanded online. Yeah. It's, like it's not necessarily like your, what the perception that I have of your brand isn't only built online. I think mm. if you want to build a brand, you have to do it offline as well. Yes. Um, there are certain touch points that are so necessary for people to experience your brand. So if yeah. ever you have merchandise, mm. um, this t-shirt might Stuff be like yeah, it's yeah. an it's an offline touch point yes. it's like i can touch it i can feel it yes. the quality is great i saw someone wear it right um versus i saw it on instagram when mm. i was scrolling mm. versus i heard someone speak about mm. it versus you know there's certain touch points that expand the experience someone has of your brand just because mm. 
you didn't only build a brand online. Right, right, right. And you can build a successful brand online. Sure. But if you want to expand your brand experience, you have to do it offline as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. And for the church specifically, it's a very much offline business. Mm, you mm. want people to come to the church building on the Sunday. Sure, sure. You want people to come to the youth thing on the Friday. Mm, mm. So there are certain things that you just have to do specifically if you're trying to build a community of people right, right. because i think a successful brand is built when there's a community of ambassadors Ooh, of your brand yes. so for the church setting any setting um if you have a community of ambassadors for your brand that's where you'll see like a high growth oh, for your brand it, as well the growth just snowballs it will the momentum is so much it will. it's almost like it's like a her, her life or like yeah yeah, yeah. anything <laughs> tr- uh, what do you call this pyramid scheme uh, network uh, Any, marketing, network marketing yeah, yeah. anything like that because you realize those people are their marketing scheme yes, yes. that person has a great experience with the brand mm. so they're going to tell someone else about it mm. they'll tell their mother their father their whole mm. family mm. next thing you know it's trickled down because yes. and you wouldn't even have to see a herbal life ad on uh, TV absolutely I've never seen one, but yeah. I can tell you the <laughs> yes, plethora of Herbalife people that I know. Yes, yes. And the DMs that come in. And the DMs that come in. <laughs> hey, have you heard? Do you yes, want to yes. lose this by mm. this? Like they become ambassadors mm, of the brand. So mm. like when you know you've built a successful brand is when you have a community of ambassadors mm, mm. for your brand who are unpaid actors. Yes, yes. How do we successfully do that to, to turn church members yeah. into brand ambassadors? Yeah. Uh, to church members who will become proud of mm. speaking about the church, mm. sharing on social media about yeah. the church. What what motivates someone from just being a, a, a chair member, sitting yeah. on the chair and actively mm. then um, shouting about the brand? Yeah, I, I'll speak of a personal experience for me. So I, um, I don't want to say I'm between churches at the moment. <laughs> but yes. <laughs> yes. Let's say that. Let's say that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you. I get you. <laughs> so it really depends on what the person is looking for and what the church offers. Sure. Um, and I think whatever you offer, offer it beautifully. Mm-hmm. Um, and for me, I think the most important thing that we might take for granted within the church setting is community. Yes. Um, but great community, like mm. intimate community, and not necessarily genuine community. Genuine community. Yeah. And not only the community of, oh, I came on Sunday, now I left. Yes, it is. But having other things outside of the church that force you to come back. It's like, you, yeah. I've learned so much over yeah, yeah, there. Yeah. Um, and I think gone are the days where church is only about Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's also about the well-being of the people. Mm. Um, caring about not only, yes, your soul is 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 freed yeah. and your soul is saved, mm. but you probably don't have food to eat tonight. Yes, man. Hey. Um, so there, there's yeah. a certain level of an extension of god's heart yeah. that we need to be mm. those hands yes you know yes, 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 yes. um god only and i think in in many instances when jesus was like would save someone from certain sickness wouldn't be yeah. a be healed all the time yeah. it would be like your your sins are forgiven yes. and by virtue of your sins being forgiven you are now well yeah. like go and sin yes, no more now yes, yes. take up your mat and mm, go mm. so we need to have a take up your mat and go mm. type of instance when it comes to the church as right. well to not only care for the soul of the people yeah. but every other sphere of their lives mm. because unfortunately um when you are financially stretched sometimes you don't d- don't want to go to church yes. you don't want to hear no the lord will bless you <laughs> you don't want to hear the Lord knows you. I'm like, I know these you, things. I need an EFT. Like now. now. <laughs> you are late yes. now. <laughs> so there's certain solutions that build up the community yeah. of the church in essence. Mm. And for me at the moment, um, there's a church that I absolutely love, but not in love with. Mm. Right. Mm. And I'll explain how, because the two things that I look for in a church is community and sound doctrine. Yes, yes, for yes. me, it's like, I need you to preach the word yeah. unadulterated word yeah. of God. Yeah. But I also want there to be a very great sense of community yes, as well. Yes. Some you, churches don't. Would you forgive a church for bad music? No, 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 no sorry. That's the third thing. <laughs> all right, I was just checking. <laughs> That's the third thing. We okay? are African after we all. We are. I mean, come on, get my spirit moving. <laughs> right, right. All right, so I think those are the three things. Yes. <laughs> great music, great worship, great praise, yeah. sound doctrine, and, yeah. and community. Mm. Um, and this church has great community mm. oh beautiful community mm. listen community wise i'm with them every wednesday yeah. because they're such lovely people mm. who are concerned for your well-being 
yes, we know you know Jesus and mm. we're going to pray with you. But how are you doing? Mm. Okay, how's work going? Mm. Um, and that sense of community, I'm, I'm being an ambassador for that church right yes, now yes. by saying they do community well, so well. Yeah. And if anyone came to me and said, I need a church that's going to be a great community, there's only, I, I'm, I'm like, go yeah, there. Go there. Mm. Because I've had a great experience in that field. Mm, mm, mm. So I think um, orchestrating great experiences Ooh. for the people who are coming to your church. Yes is great yes the church is not about you at the end of the day and how you look mm. um and there are certain churches that i have a problem with obviously mm -hmm. that make it about themselves yeah. too much how yeah. we look how that's going to be mm. this has to be this way i'm like okay okay guys mm -hmm. can we calm down this yeah. is not what we're <laughs> here chill, for at yeah. the end of the day but if someone um in terms of audience is very like on how they should look. Like if me as an audience, I care about how a church looks, sure. then that's a church for you. Yes. It's really understanding your audience at the end of the day. But yeah. I think um, how churches can deliberately build that community is right. just by being very, like create, orchestrate a good a good experience yeah, yeah, yeah. for the people who are there. Yeah. And not even just like an orchestration, like you, you're you acting this out, but sure. let it genuinely come from what sure. you're trying to yeah, do yeah, yeah. at the end of the day. So I think yeah. it's tricky, but depending on the church you are, mm, mm. then and also what your priority is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if community is a priority for you, do it well. Yeah, if good. fellowship is a priority for you, do it well. Yes. If good music is a priority for you, Excellent. do yeah. it yeah, well. So I think yeah. whatever you're trying to put out, do it well. I get you, I get yeah. you. Um, one thing that we all learn as entrepreneurs, sometimes in a very hard way, mm. is 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 our lessons on failure. Yeah. And um, you know, if you've not failed big time as an entrepreneur in something, uh, are you even an <laughs> are entrepreneur? You even, are you even are an you entrepreneur? <laughs> <laughs> How do we fail successfully? You know, mm. the mentality of failing successfully. Sometimes with we think we are comfortable with winning. I mm. think you all know how to win, maybe. Yeah. Some maybe not, because that's also a science, or whatever, mm. a virtue. But failing successfully, and you've shared openly about an experience where you got sued mm. in the seven digits. <laughs> seven digits lawsuit <laughs> came against you. That was you. fun. <laughs> <laughs> I recommend that. Fully recommend. And, and, and you use that word fun a lot. And yeah. yeah um, how should we see failure? And most most importantly, yeah. bouncing back from it. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it comes with changing your relationship with failure. Mm. Because I think most of the time we see failure as something we can't come back from. Yeah. Or something that defines us yes. at the end of the day. Yes, and I yes, think yes. as um, entrepreneurs specifically, you... Um, like, you know, you, you almost name yourself according to the experience you've had. Sure, sure. So I think it's important to not see yourself um, from that experience and almost like identify with that failure. Mm. So I may have gone through the experience and through the failure, but it doesn't, I don't take my I, like identity yeah. from it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My value is not diminished from mm. the failure. Mm, mm. Um, I still have hold the same kind of value for myself even after the failure mm. so it's important not to to change your relationship with failure so that it doesn't define you mm. so that you just kind of look at it as an experience you can learn from mm. so i can't wait to learn from this sure. uh, and i think the trickiest thing is that we we love praying away troubles right don't take this away yeah from yeah yeah me, <laughs> you yes, know yes um and it reminds me when um, I think the disciples, when Jesus was about mm. to, you know, feed the 5,000, the mm. five loaves and the two fish, it was mm. the disciples saying, no, send them away. Like, mm. we don't have food for them. And Jesus was like, <laughs> no, oh, you guys. give them food. Yeah, you, you, <laughs> you, do, you, you do, do it. Job. You yeah. do the job. And I think we we tend to do it a lot. We tend to want to pray away yeah. our our troubles yes. a lot and don't realize that the multitude comes from the trouble. Yes. And those are defining moments. Absolutely. Moments. They really are. So, um, me being sued was really such a strengthening moment for me. But mm. I honestly think God has shielded me so much from um, taking in too much sadness mm -hmm. or taking in, like having something defined. Sure, me. sure. So for me, it's almost, I felt like I really cruised through being sued. Really? <laughs> I cruised through it. So I honestly, I don't, I can't explain yeah, to you yeah. how. But you know, when you feel like you're just in this bubble and everything's happening around you, I know I'm being sued, but like, yeah okay <laughs> like, I, I don't know but yeah it was really I, I can't say it wasn't a difficult experience of 
Um, but it was such a new experience that sure. I was so fascinated about uh, being sued. And going to court. And going to court. <laughs> I want to look like Jessica Pearson on that day. <laughs> so it was really just being so fascinated about this and, failure. And also you were so young. Epic. Yes. But like, like, wow. You know, like I was really so wide-eyed. Mm. Like I was so like, oh my goodness. <laughs> I honestly felt like a girl on a roller coaster for the first oh, time. Oh my word, yeah. Because... You, you don't know what to expect. Mm. And unfortunately, that's what entrepreneurship yeah. is. Yeah. It's really just the roller coaster. You don't know when it's going to turn left, turn mm. right. You're going to get off it either thinking, let's do that again, or I'm not doing that ever again. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's either of yes. the two, but there's a certain level of excitement when you get onto a roller coaster. Yeah, yeah. the fact that you did it. You did it, yeah. you know? Um, and you almost expect ups and downs, mm. but you went on it nonetheless. And I think being sued was just one of those experiences. Mm. Whereas like, mm. I... Like, I didn't know it was going to happen. Mm. But as it happened, there were just so many things unfolding one day after the time. I was like, oh, this happens? Mm. Oh, and then they do that? Mm. Mm. Like, there's a certain level of excitement that came with it, mm. though it was a very tough experience to have. Yes, because yes. there's a lot of things that trickled down with me and my business partner at the time and mm. the business mm. as well. It had impacted so much. My goodness. Um, and it was a big failure mm. for me. Mm. But it wasn't a failure so much to me that said, just go get a job Ish. and quit this thing because uh, clearly uh-huh. you're not made for it. Yeah, all right. You didn't feel that hot. Yeah, you, you did uh, not no. feel that no, hot. No, no, no. I didn't. Honestly, it's like, come on. You're still yeah. alive? Yeah. Good. Good. Let's go. Um, did you die? <laughs> no. Great. Let's do this again. Let's do it again. <laughs> so it was really, yeah. it was a really defining moment for me that made me choose. Because like I was saying earlier, it's like, yeah. When I went to Durban, leaving home, I chose mm. Jesus for myself. Yeah. When I got sued, yeah. I felt like I chose entrepreneurship for myself Ooh. after that. Ooh. Because it's almost like those hard moments will define whether you're doing what you're doing because yes. you want to or because yes. you're just for- forced by circumstances. Ah, that's, that's, that's amazing. That's amazing. So I think that really, for me, was a defining moment yeah. to say, okay, you got sued now. You still yeah. want to do this entrepreneurship thing? <laughs> or Let's see. I guess bored. Maybe. Let's see how full-time ministry looks like. You know? Didn't do that. So you know, I think yeah. it was really a defining moment. And those failures, um, I think for everyone else, it's almost like, just look at how you're going to mm. be at the end of it. Will yeah. you still do what you want to do? Mm. Or are you going to choose a different path? Sure. So I think it really brings out a certain level of tenacity in sure, you sure. to see whether you are doing you're called for what you're doing yes, yes. or you just did it because of vibes. No, no, I hear you. Yeah. We're out of time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this question, this conversation mm. on this last point mm. uh, brings up the mental health yeah. discussion, mm. w- which, I mean, is a battle for mm. so many people mm. and entrepreneurs mm. a lot. I'm yeah. sure you get a lot of messages, mm. of, you know, people suffering in that area yeah. or struggling in that yeah. area. How do we stay afloat? What are some healthy practices that we can do? Mm. Of course, there's therapy. Mm. There's medication when yes. needed. The, uh, what else? Are, what, are we hiking? Are we joking? <laughs> senza and chima? Like, senza and say meditator? Like, First of all, follow me on Instagram. You'll have a laugh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but secondly, I think, I don't take life too seriously. It's yeah. probably, it's, we, we're here. It's a fleeting time. We're here for a yeah, short time. Yeah. Make it a fun time. But, mm-hmm. Um, I think what's important is really rest. Yeah. Um, for me, it's yeah. become the most important for my mental health, specifically because, uh, like, I've been doing what I'm doing. I've been working for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and sometimes you feel so exhausted that you can't even work anymore. Sometimes yeah. it's important to rest. shut down. And I know your 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 business sometimes doesn't allow you to mm. do it, but like rest is so important. Um, just having boundaries between personal time and work time. Yes. Um, not working after five, not mm. working on weekends. I don't mm. work on weekends when okay. I when I can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and I think last year when things were a bit easier, I decided to have a four-day work week. I wouldn't work mm. on Fridays at all. Mm. But that was intentional because I was tired. Mm. Um, and I, I was no good to my business when I was not good. Absolutely. So I think the most important thing, the best thing you can do for your mental health is to rest. Mm. What you do in the resting time is really up to you. Yeah. You can read a book, go yeah. hiking. Yeah. As long as dog, it's filling. It must, you be. must feel that it's like filling, don't you know? exert yourself too yes. much in the time of rest yes. because sometimes you're resting but you're working yeah. in something's like okay now that i'm not doing my business work let mm. me go do other things other work yeah. no it's like rest completely yeah. but do something that replenishes you yeah. and not necessarily something that forces you to exert oh, yourself and sleep, guys. Oh, sleep. hey rest sleep uh, sleep guys <laughs> eight hours a day yeah how can people get hold of uh, branding africa mm. and uh who who is your ideal client? Who do you want to con- to contact? Yeah. You? Who, who can you help? Who are you best 
equipped to help. I'm based equipped to help African entrepreneurs want to build great brands. Amazing. Um, so if you know you want to build a great brand, I'm your girl. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> What's the website again? Uh, we are brandingafrica.com. I love it. <laughs> hey, God, I need to re- I need to relook my domain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, come on, it's part of branding at the end of the definitely, day. Definitely, <laughs> definitely. It's been an amazing chat, Amanda. Thank you for the it generosity. Is. Thank you. Um, we need another catch up later sometime. Please, please Got you. make it. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, we are looking out for what uh, the growth circle can bring yeah. as well. Um, and the next time we have a day off, whatever, we need a jumping Soon. castle. D- don't listen. <laughs> it's going to be a costume party, so go get a spider Come on. Come on. <laughs> come on. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be coming. <laughs> As a gentleman, there was Amanda Svia, uh, entrepreneur, award winning marketer, right. and brand builder. Um, we brand Africa, branding Africa is the name mm. of the business. Uh, check her out on the socials as well. Um, and uh, yeah, man, I know she can add so much value to your company, to your project, mm. to your brand. She is a partner in building your brand. Thank you so Absolutely. much for being with us today. Uh, for me and Amanda, it's toodles. Bye bye. Toodles.